I first developed an interest in understanding evolution. I was getting a PhD in chemistry and I started realizing that public doesn't have an increased understanding of evolution, if any. And with that, I started an outreach project where I translated evolution documents into different languages. And a part of this was a, a section on astrobiology. And I didn't even know about the field itself. And I, I read about astrobiology and what kind of questions it can address, and I never went back. I studied uh, chemistry in Turkey. And I moved to the United States to study biomolecular chemistry during PhD. And I was interested in enzymes, I still am, I love proteins. And I was interested in their behavior, and later I wanted to understand how they evolved. And more and more my questions got bigger, and the ability of the field as a whole, or the tools that we use in chemistry or biochemistry felt limited. So I did seek different tools, and in a way astrobiology was the obvious direction for me, not because of the title of the field or the fact that you know, there are a lot of different scientists in it, but the questions that I was interested in drove me to the field. So it was inevitable. Why is life the way it is, the way we see, what drew life to the way that we observe it now? What kind of processes draw life? I think understanding or at least making an attempt to understand, are we alone? Why are we here? what happened in the past to make our biota, our whole planet, to be the way it is, are one of the biggest questions you can ask. And the ability of having a field and reaching to scientists from different backgrounds that are interested in these questions is very exciting. If you go back 100 years ago, the questions that astrobiology is trying to answer right now, such as, are we alone? Or where did life come from? How did life originate? These were more questions related to philosophy and the fact that now we have the scientific tools to answer a philosophical question is, is very unique. If you think about it, we, we want to understand alien planets, we want to find alien life, life that is weird to us or life maybe that is going to be very similar to what we have right now. But we have no idea of what happened on one life forms that we know, the life forms that we are familiar with on our own planet. If you think about it, our past state, this planet, were also different stages of alien life forms, right? If you time traveled to two billion years ago, that would be an alien life for you. It would be an alien planet. But how much of this past do we really know? And how much of it do we really understand? I think astrobiology is right now the only field, and NASA researchers, I think, are going to be the ones that will be able to help address these questions. I also at that time was reading a lot about evolution and one of the biggest uh, ideas in evolution is the idea that whole life can be viewed as a tape and that we could perhaps rewind the tape and replay it and whether this rewind and replay mix of life tape would result in the same way that we see it now. How, how repeatable is life itself? And this was a thought experiment proposed by a biologist about 30 years ago. And I wanted to give it a try and see, perhaps, you know, can I develop an experimental system to address this? And I wrote a grant proposal to the NASA Postdoctoral Fellowship, and I was denied the first time. And I, I called the professors, I called people in the astrobiology field, I came to the astrobiology conferences, and I asked for a frank response, frank evaluation of my application. I said, tell me the biggest flaw that you see in this application. Tell me how can I improve this? How can I get this better? Because I want this bad. <laughs> so they, they were very, you know, they were very brutally honest, which is good, which is good. And it was very constructive. So I revised my application. I, uh, I fixed the flaws. I did more experiments. I applied again. And then I was granted the fellowship with that and it was the best thing that ever happened to me as astrobiologist. Uh, and especially, I would say that one of the most inspiring events was Astrobiology Graduate Student Conference at GradCon. And uh, a bunch of us, uh, you know, we got together and we realized that we are not alone. We are all interested in the same kind of questions and we want to reach out to more people and that's how we uh, formulated and then later conceived SegonNet and a tool to bring the 
anyone who is interested in astrobiology, regardless of the background and age, to join in an online conversation about astrobiology. So this was <laughs> 2011 of GradCon, Astrobiology Graduate Student Conference in Montana. And we were all gathered together in a room. I remember the moment very clearly. And we were talking about the lack of opportunities in order to reach to people who study astrobiology and our challenges. And our um, friend Grasshopper, who is one of the co-founders, talked about his outreach project in Tanzania. And he said that um, he, would, he was traveling to Tanzania and starting this outreach program and talking to kids. And he talked about the inability of the kids to find a mentor or a role model and the inability of the mentors to travel to Tanzania. At the same time, I uh, was organizing a workshop without wolves with NASA Astrobiology Institute. And during this uh, workshop, we realized that we have a lot of international participants. In fact, one of the participants were a high school, a group of high school students uh, who apparently stayed up late. So it was about 11 p.m. This is Turkey. And they, they emailed me saying that we, we want to stay up late. Our teachers here, we all gathered in the conference room and we're watching the workshop with Owls and we don't speak English, but it's inspiring. And I, I, I felt so emotional about this. So I shared this story, Grasshopper is sharing the other story. And we realized that there are all this interests in other side of this planet who wants to understand where we came from too. You just don't even know that there is a field for them and what can we do about it? So we said, why don't we start an online tool where we bring all these people together? Let's add an outreach component. Let's add a grassroots component. Let's add a mentorship component and see where it evolves. The product is second then. We have mentorship programs. We have conferences where we broadcast. We have monthly talk to an astrobiologist feature. Lots of internationals sign up. They, they come in, they join, they ask their questions. We highlight one of our mentors every month. And it's nice because one, one of the problems of graduate students who wants to mentor or who wants to inspire a younger person is simply the time commitment and their schedule not allowing. It's ironic because we are very familiar of this term coined Sagan effect. You do so much outreach that perhaps your science won't be taken seriously. So we said, okay, let's, let's take that second effect with the full astrobiology spirit, turn it around and make it positive, and there's your second net. I think doing outreach helps you to communicate yourself and what you do better. We have that role as scientists. You may not like it, or you may like it, but you have to do it. We have a responsibility to taxpayers. We, we need to explain to them what we do with their money. Why is that important? How are we going to help them? How are we going to make their life better in the long term or the short term? And if we cannot explain it to taxpayers, it's, it's going to be problematic in the long run. And that's something that scientists need to learn. So I was a part of this uh, outreach mentorship program myself in 2014. This was in uh, Pittsburgh High School in California. Uh, the, the high school teacher reached out to us and he said he wants to integrate astrobiology in his curriculum and he's got these um, students who are um, a bit challenged in their background and could use an opportunity like this where they can talk to scientists. So we teamed the students up and we divided them into four groups and then we were assigned to each group where the idea was for us to meet them every week and help talk about an astrobiology concept. This was all online, so no travel involved. They uh, came into a room, such like this, and then we, put, they, we asked them to put their laptop right in front of them, and then we talked about science concepts. And with, with my group, uh, we watched uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson videos, we watched Bill Nye, the science guy, and these kids were coming from very challenging backgrounds. And I could see in their attitude that almost like a therapy from escaping from the reality of their daily life, the challenges that they're coming from families that are immigrants, you know, backgrounds that don't fit in the society or they feel different and weird and it's really at that age anyway. And science is so powerful in that way that it can, especially in science field like astrobiology where you're literally out of this world in your mind, that we could see the effect in them and uh, they did actually come up with a very cool 
final project and we are still in touch. They write us cards and they're one of them actually is going to go to college. So it's, it's pretty cool. You can see the effects and um, how it can change. And I know it because that's what astrobiology and science did for me. So I, um, even though I, I was raised in, a, uh, in an Eastern like Muslim family, I wasn't raised in a standards of typical, um, I would say, um, Muslim community where women are really not really a part of the society. My father was a big supporter of women in science and women in technology and business and everything. He said, just whatever you do, be really good at it because that's your only choice because you're a woman. He said a man could get a job without even a degree, but a woman needs to have a diploma. And that never left me. He said, they can take everything from you, but not your education, that's yours to keep. So I was very dedicated and I had that in mind. But then the reality happens, right? Then you meet or you get integrated in a society that does not see women that way. So it was a, it, I went through phases, I would say, that the, I don't see myself different. I don't see myself as a woman. I don't see myself as a man. I just see myself as a human being with curiosity. So you don't understand why you get these challenges that feel, it feels a bit wrong, it feels a bit different, but you don't really know what's going on because you don't look at yourself and think you're weird. You don't look at yourself and think you're different if you don't have that intrinsically in your upbringing. But then it, it gets put in there. So I was reading this quote by um, Oprah, <laughs> which I love. She said that we, we do as women we need to we spend a bit of time attaching things that don't belong to us. And then we spend decades to undo what they did to us. And this is all emotionally. And I think women hearing me will understand what I'm talking about. I think women need to keep that in mind maybe early on that it's not, it's not going to be easy. I think if we accept that, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be hard. I'm, there will be times where I will hate it, but I can do it. And compared to what I think the generation before us went through, our job is easier. And think about that, and how hard it must be for them if this is the easy version. <laughs> I was flying to this conference and I was sitting next to um, a woman who talked about his do her daughter to me. And she said that my daughter is interested in space just like you. And uh, I guess my TARDIS t-shirt with NASA logo in it kind of revealed that I like space. So we, that was the conversation starter. And then she said that my daughter is nine years old and she's interested in space, but I don't think she's going to make it. I asked her why you say that. And she said her school is very bad, doesn't really have a good curriculum, and teachers aren't that interested in teaching. So I don't think she's going to succeed like you did. So I turned to her and I said, I come from Turkey. I didn't even learn science, like not let alone, well, there was not even real science curriculum in my high school. No woman in my family made it to high school. And I'm now at Harvard doing astrobiology research. So if I could do it, your daughter can do it. 